Hey guys, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to an art journal tutorial. This one is part of the napkin journal series. Here is a sneak peek of the napkin and the finished page. This napkin is called Scarlet Petrol and it can be purchased at ninnysnapkins.com. There's um, links in the description box below. So as always, you need to pull off the two plies of white napkin before you use the napkin when you decoupage. I just use a piece of painter's tape and I pull it off in the corner and most times it's really, really easy to do. Now I'm just deciding what I want and one of the joys of napkins is that you can pick and choose the elements of the napkin that you want to use. And you know, if you look at this napkin, you've got four quadrants and Two of them, the birds are facing one way, and two of them, the birds are facing the other way. And that's great. So when you're looking at napkins, look at the, what you're getting. Because if you have that reverse, it often really helps in setting up composition. And you'll see that I'm going to use two sets of birds here, one looking one way and one the other. And I'm going to basically come up with my own composition in that. Now, see the teal pieces that I'm pulling off here? I am going to save these and I will use that on some project later on, just as collage papers. The, the napkin goes down, it provides a really nice texture and color, so you can use it just as collage paper. So as you're tweaking it and using bits and pieces, have a bin where all of these can go and then you can use them. Same thing that middle piece with all that luscious scroll work. Now here I've taken a couple pieces. That little bird is going to end up on something else and I'm taking two birds going the different ways and I have it kind of swooping through the middle. So here you can see how I've changed the composition. Now I'm outlining it lightly with a pencil because I for the most part, want to avoid putting any texture underneath the birds. Now I chose this stencil from the Crafters Workshop. It's called Linked Tiles, one of my favorites, because the motif that's on here resembles somewhat the shape of the flowers in the napkin. So I look for something that connects them, and I'm putting my thick gesso through this stencil and I'm just rubbing it and then I'm moving the stencil a little bit to extend it so that it's not perfectly square or geometric. I don't want it to look like a box that I've just added there. Now you can use modeling paste for this step or you can thin your modeling paste a little bit and get basically like thick gesso. Take the modeling paste and mix it with your gesso. So I've dried it a little bit and I'm just again extending the stenciling here. I want some lovely texture where I don't have the birds. So there you can see it's kind of swooping down. Now, because I want to keep the brights before I colorize the background, I am going to glue the napkin down and I am using my Liquitex Basics Fluid Matte Medium. And a link to that in the stencil is in the description box. And I'm just gluing these down ever so lightly. Now, if you rip the napkin a little bit, like I did right there with the bird, you can just kind of put it back in. And the reason I ripped the napkin is I grabbed my usual gluing brush instead of my decoupage brush, which is softer. Now I'm going to use this cobalt teal, Naples yellow, and magenta. 
because I'm taking the colors from the napkin and I'm going to recreate the background. Now, when I mix the Naples yellow with the teal cobalt or turquoise, it makes a darker green. And what I want to do in where all the white space is, is basically make it look like there are more flowers in that background. The sky with the flowers peeking through. So I'm not trying to, you know, there you guess you can see the lovely green that gets made. What I want to do also is somehow hide the I don't want the this line where the napkin ends and the paper begins so I'm going to try to cover that up with different shades I'm also mixing in gesso so on my glass media mat I've got the, the turquoise or teal and the prussian blue not the prussian blue the pink and the Naples yellow, and I'm dipping into with the gesso, and I'm mixing it all on the paper. Every once in a while, your fingers get a little bit too gunked up. Just clean them off and then keep applying the paint. I'm just blending it as I go. And down below, you can see where I've added a little bit of that magenta, and I just love that because it looks like that's a flower or the illusion of a flower there. Now, if it gets a little too muddy or you get colors that you don't want, you can either wipe it off with a baby wipe or let it dry and then put another layer on top and it doesn't blend anymore and you can totally cover it with the color that you want. And I love how with the gesso, the thick gesso, some parts are staying white and that's adding a little more interest. And you know me, I will be doing things down the road to bring out that texture of the stenciling. Right now, you can really still see where the napkin ends and the page begins. So keep an eye on that as we go. And hopefully I'm successful at the end of hiding that or making that look a lot less. So there's just a lot of playing here, adding color, taking off color, mixing color. But overall, I'm quite happy with the background. Now, because I want the flowers of the napkin and the bird to be the focal image, I want them to be a little bit brighter. So I wasn't going to do a whole lot of painting on the flowers. I was doing first just attempting to do a light wash. And then I decided, you know what, I need to do the painterly effect. So I'm getting the yellow, the pink, and the gesso and painting over those flowers using what was in the napkin as a guide and making some very abstract flowers. They're nondescript, they're nonspecific. But when you look at it, you are hopefully reading it as a flower. Now this, as I extend the flower over top of where the napkin cut, is one of the ways that I'm hiding the line between the napkin and the page. And I'm going in, with the straight magenta, the magenta mixed with the Naples yellow, the straight magenta, the straight Naples yellow, and just building up different shades and hues of those colors. I'm just using a small brush and just trying to keep it very painterly, very loose.
making it kind of look like, I don't know if they're cherry blossoms or apple blossoms or what they are. And it doesn't really matter. My goal, I want those to pop. I want that to be the brightest part. Adding some just straight gesso. It builds up the texture on those flowers, which is lovely. It also serves to highlight. And I'm just playing, following my instincts, you know, what looks good. Adding a little pink here and there. I'm really liking the bottom where the pink is. At the top, you, you'll see that I haven't put any pink and it looks like something's missing there. And I do add pink at the top at some point in time. So here I'm just adding more petals and I'm extending it past what was the picture on the napkin. Painting over the napkin at first when you're doing that is a little bit scary. I've been trying and, and experimenting with this for some time, doing this overpainting technique, and it gets easier. And there I'm just adding some pink and some gesso. Now I want the texture to pop a little bit, so I'm taking a little bit of brown and rubbing it over the high points. I'm getting it on the pad of my finger and just rubbing it on the high points. I don't want it to really look like it's brown. And if you get too much on, just grab a baby wipe and wipe it off. That wasn't quite the color I wanted, so you just saw me doing that, getting rid of the color. This is somewhat of an odd color combination for me. Like it's the Naples yellow, magenta, and the teal. But it looks beautiful. I usually go for more of the brights and this is more on the pastel side. You could also just cut out the birds in of themselves and use those on a page or iCAD or project that you're doing. Either one or a selection. Now I'm using some Hooker's Green with the yellow and I'm just adding some of the line work, the stems, the leaves making them a little bit bolder. And again, I'm not trying to be too precise. I'm not trying to be exact. The nice thing of the napkins is you can do one, practice on it, then do another one, practice on it, and you can see the progress and the growth that you will have from one to the other. And it's a, you know, the napkins are so inexpensive. Just adding a little bit of darkening of the brown on the birds and black. Because again, those are the focal images. I want them to stand out the most. Now I've got a little bit of black on my angle brush and I'm adding a little bit of shading. And again, this is so that these birds pop. They stand out. They look like they are in front of all those flowers. And you can see that just that little bit of shading really did make that happen. And then I'm shading the black around the outside edges. And that's going to tie in with the black of the sentiment that I'm going to put in and the black that's on the birds. OK, 
Can you tell that there was a napkin now? The line? Have I been successful? In the description box below, I have a list of Karen's basic supplies, ones that you that I tend to be using pretty much every page. And then above that, I list the products that are special to this particular tutorial. And just a reminder that the stencils, the six inch TCW stencils can be purchased at Nini's Napkins as well as the napkins. Now I'm just adding some darker shades to the flowers. I'm use, I went up to the quinacridone magenta just to shade it darker. Because I really want the birds and the flowers to be most forward, the brightest part of the page. Adding a little bit more yellow to make them darker. Just applying basically a light wash. I'm not getting overly thick with the paint. And then adding some highlights back in, both on the flowers and the birds. And you can see that little bit of white, that highlighting, just added so much to those birds. I did take white paint on the pad of my finger and rub it on top of the stenciling as well. And that just lightened it up. And it gives, you know, made it more pastel and it seemed to fit. Here I'm using the woodless charcoal pencil and I'm really getting that smudged look around the edge. And I think it really suits this page. Now, when I use the charcoal pencil, you need to spray it with a fixative if this was a canvas before I would add varnish. I have the sentiment, but keeping it white was a little too stark. So I'm just brushing on a light coat of sepia archival ink and then I add a little bit of Naples yellow on top just to colorize it so it blends and fits the page. Adding a little bit of gold splatters and I have this pre-mixed and it thickens over time so I add a little bit of water every once in a while. So I'm splattering and I love using my fan brush for that. And now I'm splattering with white. Just need to add a little bit more white in there. And then I come back and I splatter with the quinacridone magenta as well. I just love the look of these birds on here and the flowers. It just makes me happy. And there I'm splattering with the magenta. using the fluid matte medium to glue down the sentiment. Now, if I was doing this on a canvas, I probably would print the sentiment onto tissue paper so that it disappears. But again, that's a personal choice. Two different looks, not a matter of right or wrong, just different. And this says, a garden is not a place, it's a journey. And this is from my Through the Garden Gate sentiment pack, which is also available for instant digital downloads at Ninny's Napkins. Using the gel pen to outline the sentiment and the page. Right away, you're going to see some close ups. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. That lets YouTube know you like my channel and they recommend it to other people. And that helps me. Follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Until next time, keep creating.